Well guys, today's video is completely different than what I normally do. It is not crafty, well, I guess, I don't know. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit artsy, but we are gonna upcycle this old fashioned rocking horse that was given to my son when he was about two to three years old. He's outgrown it now. He did put it to use, it was already used, but he did have fun with it and we're gonna actually upcycle it so that we can give it to Miss Little Aubrey, who's turning three. That's my daughter's god sister. So we're gonna make it all pretty and girly and fun. Now, for those of you who've already been here, uh, know that my name is Tania from Art E. Son. Welcome, if you have never been here, thank you for your visit. So I actually started working on it already because I was not uh, initially gonna record. So some work has already been done. I went ahead and used some quick wood to fill some spots, some cracks, and some holes from the nails that I had to remove. I also use some wood glue to fix some loose parts, the head and the handles, um, and conditioned the ears because they are real leather and they were cracked and dry and so I had to condition them. I will be painting them. It might not be the best part of it, but we'll see how it turns out. So anyways, I am going to put um, time stamps here in this video because it is a little bit of a long one. So I will be putting time stamps you can look in the description to see all of them and you can just skip parts. All right guys, so let me just go ahead and show you briefly what I've used and what I'm using here today. Um, I got a good old sand block. You can use sandpaper, whichever one you like. I grabbed this one from the Dollar Tree because it's quick and accessible. I also used the Gorilla wood glue to fix the head and a couple of other loose parts on the horse I already did this part um, and then because there was a couple of pieces actually missing I used quick wood which is like a putty I fell in love with this product first time using it after you use it you can sand it staple hammer do whatever you got to do once it's fully cured I'm gonna go ahead and link that in the description uh, I'm also gonna use a white Diamond Heart Repurposed Paint. I wanted to choose a paint that was at least a little bit scratch resistant. I'll be using this for the majority of the horse. Um, let's see how it works because supposedly you don't have to prep, meaning sand it. Let's see how that, that works. <laughs> um, some of the accessories, I'll be using this pink uh, for the seat and for the base. Very girly. Love it. And the hair I got here is purple. I should have actually probably cut that because you will see later on that I decided to use a different color yarn. I changed my mind. Don't judge me. But anyways, let's get started. I will mention again that I am putting timestamps in the description for different sections of the video. I do speed through some of the painting because it's pretty basic. Um, here, I'm just gonna go ahead and sand that putty that I placed to try to make it as smooth as possible. Um, and I think usually that is really the only part that I'm sanding. I guess you can go ahead and sand the rest of it if you like. I didn't feel like doing all of that. So, um, different sections of the video, you're gonna see if you wanna see how I placed the hair. You can go ahead and skip over to that because I know that's the part that I had to kind of figure out. Um, I did do some stenciling on it so you can move forward to that so you can see that part of the customization of the horse. But for the most part, just enjoy the process.
So I did want to show you, I did use a different kind of paint for the stenciling. Um, this is a Montart, Mont Mart, sorry, I can't pronounce that, in a metallic magenta. Um, I will go ahead and link that in the description. It comes in a set of eight. And then as far as the stenciling, I use self-adhesive stenciling, the ones that you can find at either Walmart or Hobby Lobby. Um, now, I do want to say I went straight to just adding the paint on here, but if you want to try to prevent bleeding as much as possible, you can try to use some Mod Podge, some clear Mod Podge first, and then go ahead and add the color afterwards, and that will help you prevent the bleeding some. I'm just going to go ahead and clean it up afterwards. I don't know why. I guess... I don't know I just felt like doing it after I used the magenta I actually used a little bit of white to give a couple of highlights on the letters I also used this color this magenta metallic magenta on the ears because I didn't like how it looked with the chalky um, light pink on the ears and I think the metallic was able to cover up some of the cracks a little bit better
All right, so as I mentioned earlier, I actually changed my mind about the color of the hair because the light purple just looked too bland and Aubrey is anything but bland. So I wanted to make sure I changed uh, to a more playful hair. I'll be using the cardboard to measure the hair, wood glue for the tail as well as hot glue and then hot glue and staples for the mane. So just stay tuned so you can actually see how I do this because it is easier to, um, to demonstrate rather than try to explain it. So just in case you're curious, I did not measure this in any specific way. I just chose a piece of cardboard that I felt provided a good length of hair. I used um, one for the mane and one for the tail. Um, here, I'm gonna show you as far as the mane goes, how I parted them. Again, I did not use anything specific for this. If you are a perfectionist and you feel like counting each strand of hair to make sure that each bunch is equal more power to you I am NOT um, as concerned about that I just kind of felt it to make sure that it was similar as far as the width goes and then I took some of the yarn itself and I went ahead and took each bunch and I tied it only on one end After doing this, I went ahead to the other end and I went ahead and cut. My large scissors kind of gave out on me at this point and I couldn't find my other one so I had to use this little tiny scissor which is really no good. But I cut the other end um, of the, of the main.
Now for the tail, I tied on one end the entire bunch and then cut it at the end, similar to what I did for the mane, but I did not need um, to have smaller bunches. Once I did this, I put it all together. I left that initial string to kind of keep it from um, slipping. And I created essentially a large tassel. So I went ahead and, and created a little ball or a little knot on the top. Yep, I'm just gonna eyeball it and see how many of these fit and how many I need. <laughs> just, you know, make it do what it do. Here, as I mentioned earlier, I decided to freehand um, cleaning up the letter. So once it completely dried, I was able to come back to it, clean around it, and um, fix it up a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna use a regular Mod Podge spray sealant. I'm gonna spray this everywhere. I'm gonna add even more to the areas that I know are gonna be, um, you know, basically be exposed to more wear and tear, such as the the handles, the feet holsters, the base. Um, and I just I just sprayed it, sprayed a couple of uh, coats. For the tail, I added uh, wood glue first into the crevice or into the hole. Um, I wanna make sure that the tail is completely secure. And of course, hot glue, it comes out if you pull it hard enough. So I wanted the wood glue. And then I added um, hot glue into the edge of it to make it dry quicker. So here you see me actually pushing the yarn even further down into the into the hole and think about it we're talking about a three-year-old so most likely all of the hair is going to be pulled or tugged or something at some point so you want to try to make sure that this is uh secure
So at this point, I've already uh, hot glued and stapled the hair. I did it in an, a cross shape. So one, you know, pinning it down and the other one actually securing the first staple. Then I added a ribbon, a hot glued ribbon in order to give a cushion, you know, cover the staples, um, but really to protect it so like that, you know, no one gets scratched. Now, um, the little pieces that you see sticking out, you wanna go ahead and trim those and fix it up all nice and neat. And then you are done with the mane. And here you have it guys, the end result. I am super excited and I can't wait for Aubrey to see this. You see her initials up there. The hair looks amazing and I can't wait to show her. And we have a happy three-year-old with her new rocking horse. Thank you guys for visiting. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and of course subscribe if you like the content so far. Bye.